So we're not talking about hundreds or thousands. 40. You have 40 yeah. people. You had one job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one job. <laughs> You're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax. HIPAA help is on the way. Welcome to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs, and joining me is Donna Grindle of Cardin Compliance. Hello, Donna. Hello, David. <laughs> How are you today? I am very sleep deprived. Yeah, you would. Yeah, this another one, that four legged child. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, you're right. So. And everybody knows it's your favorite, so you're, you're going to do what you need to do. Give me less lip than all of them. I don't know. She's pretty fussy. <laughs> <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that. She's pretty fussy. Yeah, I've seen her get her head up there in, 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 in the video camera when we've talked. I know. But that's okay. Man's yep. best friend. Even David has one. I know. I was giving my I was in the kitchen the other day and my wife was getting to leave for work. So she comes over and she gives me a hug and next thing you know, there's a head between us. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? how in the world she do that? She like stood up, put her paws up on the table and pulled herself all the way up between us. <laughs> she's like, what? <laughs> Ziva knows who's the, who, who's really needing to be the baby dog. All right, what are y'all doing here? Yeah, I need to be in the middle. Yeah, I, I know that same feeling. We have that where there's just yeah. always somebody's head just kind of comes poking right there. Yeah. Oh, but you got to love them. Yeah. So uh, got got some uh, good stuff today. Uh, yes. This, this episode came from a listener question, which was, how do we talk to the man <laughs> about HIPAA? <laughs> so, that, you know, basically, how, you know, how do you talk to the boss or how do you talk to the sweet C-suite, the sweet seat? <laughs> how, do you, how do you talk to them about HIPAA? Because as we know, usually the ones that are listening and paying attention a lot of times are the ones that are doing the work. And it's the, you know, the practice managers or the privacy officer, security officer. And it's the higher ups oftentimes that are like, just do it and don't tell me about it. And then I'm not going to be in the trainings and... You know, they, they kind of don't want to get involved in that. And so that's, a, it's a big problem. And so today we're going to discuss how to crack that shell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very carefully so that you don't lose the egg. There but you go. You're not looking to get fried, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but it is, you know, it's, it's often, uh, you know, one of those things where I come in to do those meetings. You know, always it's like, well, when somebody else tells them, well, you know, it's not that. It's, you know, here, I'm just going to tell them differently. I can't take all of those other issues. The bottom line is I'm trying to protect you and your business and, more importantly, your patients. Now, let's figure that out. <laughs> now, you probably see this because I see this as well, but it's funny that you can have, like, let's just say the privacy officer can have a conversation with, you know, let's just say the doctor, and it kind of doesn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I come in and say the same thing, it's like, oh, we need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we should have been doing that all along. <laughs> and it's, you know, I always feel like so the, bad for them. You know, I know it's it's a, it's kind of like the same thing. Whereas, you know, ah, oh, you told them the same thing I told them. Why didn't it <laughs> just didn't sink in? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I guess so one option, even though we don't have this on our show notes, one option is, you know, get somebody that's, you know, involved in compliance, involved in your compliance because they carry more weight with the, uh, with the uh, upper echelon. Well, and make sure that you're on the same page about what they're going to say. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah, we've had that discussion with some IT people. Yeah, just recently <laughs> David did, in fact. Yeah. But before we drill down into that, David is since he wasn't sleeping this morning, he caught a news <laughs> article that all this HIPAA stuff had nothing to do with HIPAA, but all this HIPAA stuff flew out all over it. And <laughs> and I really I think it's important as a lead in that, you know, there's leadership <laughs> is an issue. Mm -hmm. And this is uh we're gonna talk about that leadership, but share your story that got you Started this morning. Yeah. So, as I do every morning, I comb thousands and thousands of articles oh, to, <laughs> to find what is relevant for our podcast. So, and then I'd send it all to Donna and she typed it up. Uh, so, so, 
Um, so uh, I found one this morning, and, and it's a it's a bad incident. So I'm not making light of the incident itself, um, but I want to point out the things that kind of caught me as being caught me as being funny. But <laughs> we'll see. But okay, there again, not making light of the incident. There was a teenage girl who got uh, hurt at a rodeo event. It was a school sponsored uh, rodeo event in Fort Worth, Texas. So I guess you know riding horses is probably a thing there instead of football. I don't know, but. <laughs> <laughs> so she so she gets hurt and this happens on uh, Sunday afternoon. And she's and, very critically injured by the way. I yeah, mean, this is yes. that's nothing to laugh at there. It's the ir- irony of what the article tells you is what is the issue. Right. So a couple things caught my attention. The first was that the paramedics that work for this ambulance company are you know they obviously took her and, and got her to the hospital. Well, a spokesman for the ambulance company confirmed that the ambulance took a female patient with serious injuries from the rodeo to the hospital. And the name of the hospital. And yeah, name of the hospital, name of the rodeo, the whole nine yards. Okay. So the first thing I read was like, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> yeah. Can't do that. Not, not good. Not good for the ambulance people. So now we're dealing with, and I'll just say potential, <laughs> HIPAA violation. On that, can't do that. We discussed well, you know, that you before. You evaluate it. Do the it's simple assessment. Mm-hmm. Is it is it identifiable information? Well, yep. everybody knows which kid got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it's identifiable enough that it made the news. There you go. And they knew her name and everything about where she was going to school. So yes, it's identifiable information right away. Yeah, and, and, and as we learned, yeah, it's telling exactly about her health care, uh, serious injuries, and what hospital she's at. <laughs> And and we covered this on two podcasts ago where, you know, we said OCR has made the statement that we are looking at the news. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, if I can find it, I'm sure they can find it. <laughs> Wasn't hard. It showed up in my feed. <laughs> so uh, so that kind of got me going, wow, dude, um, here's a HIPAA violation that hasn't even been announced that it's a HIPAA violation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How cool is that? You know, yeah, you learn about uh, it from somebody else too. Uh, those people right. at MedStar. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyway, I wonder if they'll report it. I wonder if they even know that they now have a HIPAA violation. And it came from the spokesperson for the company, which I would think they should know better. Yeah. If they're the spokesperson, I agree. Uh, so uh, we definitely have a lack of training and a lack of leadership mm-hmm. from uh, from them. Uh, then I go on to read more of the article. And this is the part that made me chuckle more than anything, which was, it talked about the officials, the school officials of the Rodeo Association declined to comment on the accident, citing HIPAA. <laughs> but federal privacy law, which is FERPA and HIPAA because the school was involved, they had uh, enough to know about it. Yeah. However. Exactly. However. On Facebook, they did post that one of our NT members sustained <laughs> critical injuries. So you know the social media person is not the one that was smart enough to say. So you can see, hello, this is why you have to have controls and lots of training. Because you got people mm-hmm. out there. People. People. It's the people, people. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, that was funny um, in, in some ways. <sighs> yeah. That, you know, it's not often that we get to uncover a HIPAA violation before it's reported to be a HIPAA violation. Yeah, probably so, before those privacy officers even realize they have one. <laughs> I know. So yeah. I just, you know, you feel I guess bad. I was kind of kind of giddy about that. Hey, look, I found it. <laughs> you got those worries. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? But uh, that that is a perfect segue. Well, we haven't gone into where I'm going to be, but uh, nothing's really changed on that. Go, refer back to the last episode. <laughs> refer back to the last episode because we're on a roll. So let's keep moving. All right. So our topic for today, we'll dive into now. Um, how are we going to get the boss involved? The man. <laughs> 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 I'm working for the man. Yeah. You know you're the man, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I work for the man. <laughs> yeah. And all actuality, I work for, for your a woman. But <laughs> 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 I get called the boss, but we know. I know. I always say I'm the boss as long as she doesn't disagree with my decisions. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But anyway, uh, 
when we're doing this, and, and, and a lot of it has to do with approach. Mm-hmm. And for years, you know, people just go on and on about regulations and the law and all of those kind of things. And, you know, you get, you get fatigue, you get attitude, I'm tired of hearing about it, all that kind of stuff. And so now I, I don't even really talk about HIPAA. I don't talk about OCR until the very end because that's the least of your worries. Mm-hmm. It is. Uh, this is now about protecting your patients, your clients, your business reputation, your employees. I mean, it's a long list of things that go wrong, and HIPAA can help prevent that from occurring. Mm -hmm. But it's even, you know, it's not a panacea, but if you're at least doing that, it can keep it from being worse because it gets pretty ugly. We just have to ask how awesome it is to be a PR person for Equifax (laughs) right now. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> Speaking of Equifax, did uh, you see where they were? They tweeted out the wrong website for people to go to. It actually sent them to a phishing site. I know it's just one of the I mean, many things. You know, it's like <laughs> what the? Just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier, okay. it's like wow. That case is rich in details, and we're going to hit a whole bunch of them because. Well, first, let's explain why you can't just say, look what happened to Equifax. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. (laughs) (laughs) First of all, what you've got to understand, there's a term that they use in marketing called FUD. (laughs) Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Uh, It's a marketing phrase. And it's all about, (laughs) you you know, that you've got to win over your audience with FUD. So Mm -hmm. that, that way you create an emotional reaction, which will get their attention. Right. And part of the problem is that by approaching this with this is what you must do and this is what the law says and this is what the government says, you create an emotional reaction, just not the one you're looking for. <laughs> it's usually the ostrich effect. <laughs> <laughs> that or the bear. <laughs> uh, you know, angry dog approach. Those are not the ones that matter. It's about mm-hmm. patient care lawsuits and reputation damage and uh, business viability damage, those kind of things, those matter. Make it be, you know, because that does, in the end, that is what matters to most of us. Right. If it were all about the law, we would never speak. (laughs) And we know that I do. (laughs) (laughs) I always um, I always say that the speed limit is merely a suggestion. <laughs> I just well, I always just take the speed limit number and add a ish on the end of it. Ish. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> 35ish. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but one thing too this changed I I would say recently compared to, you know, a decade ago for sure that HIPAA even though that's what we refer to mostly on the podcast, it's it's gotten now where even the states themselves have privacy and security rules and all these things that will be violated. So even if you can't or don't want to think about HIPAA, there's still state laws that can come into effect, you know, right. for those that HIPAA doesn't apply to maybe. Yeah, so if they're tired of hearing about HIPAA and they say HIPAA, shmipa, all right, well, let's talk about the state law. Yeah, because it's the same for the most part. But still, (laughs) I find that that gets, you know, I throw that in at the end. Mm -hmm. What I talk about are your main concerns. And your main concerns are, you know, protecting your client base or your patients, whichever, Mm -hmm. whether you're a business associate or not, or your client's patients, whatever you're in. That Mm -hmm. is the key to your business remaining viable, and therefore your employees should care about it, and they need to understand that, and that your patients will go find someone else. Your clients will go find someone else. And based on some of the things, you know, that we covered from that OCR NIST conference, people are starting to pay attention to those who are not doing it properly. Mm -hmm. You're, you're, yeah. Yeah, it's just been around too long. It's it's gotten way too much attention for people to now say, "Oh, I didn't know." <laughs> I didn't know. I'm so sorry. My bad. These things happen. Yeah, we'll cover that. Yeah, in a really. So, <laughs> uh, 
but one of the things is you you got to be prepared for a lot of the things that they're going to talk about or their their emotional reaction that you're not looking for to counter it so that you get to talk about the emotional reaction you're prepared for. And mm-hmm. almost always, if you have that fierce emotional reaction, it's head in the sand where you got to get the head out of the sand. So they're like, huh? Or, <laughs> or it's anger. Uh, and, and usually the anger one ends up with, let's go back to paper. And, yeah. uh, and so, you know, there's a lot of different ways I've addressed that, but now after hurricanes, Harvey and Irma, we actually are able to clearly state what the value is for utilizing electronic health records. And that is public health. It's the health of your patients and the care of your patients. Because after Katrina, where we all know we didn't really have, Katrina was before the Meaningful Use Program, which really pushed EHRs. Mm -hmm. And during Katrina, literally thousands upon thousands and thousands of records were lost in that catastrophic flood. And those records were all paper. There was that one copy, Mm -hmm. maybe another copy somewhere, but no one knows where it all ends up. And many copies could still be gone. And mm-hmm. they are they will never be retrieved. So that information is just completely gone. And now you can't reference it. So unless you sent it to someone who did have an electronic record of it, you've got nothing. And neither do your patients. So having that information electronically, it prevents it from being completely lost because we're assuming that we're going to follow these rules to secure it and maintain it properly so that it will continue to be available for a long period of time. So that's number one. The number two reason for not having paper is even if the paper doesn't get destroyed, there's just the paper. So you look at even a office in Houston that's sitting on a little island because it was absolutely amazing to look at all of those aerial pictures that we got where you could see a building that was like it's on its own little island. The water went all the way up just where the car was. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The car was parked out front, and there it was. So maybe the building survived and the paper survived, but now you can't get to it. And even if you can get to it, your patients can't get to it. And you probably don't have power or phone or a lot of those other things that you can use. So how do you treat those displaced patients? Because now... They're in other states and cities and calling you for help. They're seeing physicians there calling you for help and information. How do you get to it? Okay, I think we're done now. Paper, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. Paper is, is why would we use paper? Now, granted, it's a business decision, but as your patient, I would like to know that you are keeping up with advances in technology that allow you to care for me better. Yeah. I think the argument I hear mostly for paper is, you know, people can't hack paper. <laughs> I, well, yeah, but you know, you know, it's it's yeah, but there's the downside to paper. Hacking is something you can, you know, make efforts to prevent and control and mitigate. Mm-hmm. Not having access to paper, what you going to do? Yeah. But as you and I both know, even if you're on paper, a lot of the same uh security incident breaches will still occur even on paper. As because we know. <laughs> they're, yeah, because it's typically uh, errors that people, you know, faxing something wrong or, uh, you know, putting paper places it doesn't belong, throwing it in a dumpster. I mean, there's just tons of different ways to make that happen. Having it in a briefcase in the back of your car. Speaking <laughs> I mean, of that, perfect segue stolen. to a paper issue. So then that is the next piece. Play that news clip. We're, we'll have a link to it from... I don't know. I can't pronounce it, but it's in the Fresno area. Uh, So it's in California. And I'm pretty sure someone in this office, maybe not the individual physician that did the infraction, but someone is going to start worrying a bit more about managing paper. Don't you think? Yeah, if they keep their job. Yeah. Uh, So the net of it is this woman, uh, she had knee surgery in July, and then she also gets notice that her anesthesiologist had paper charts stolen from his car. Mm-hmm. And it it's a big news story where they're interviewing her. It shows the letterhead of the 
practice and all of those kind of things, all of those new, that news clip, watch it because, well, as you said, the, what the, the points you were making about it, what was it that she said? Um, yeah, the, well, what interested me the most about it that I, was the fact that she was quoted in the news story and the quotes that she gave really gave you insight into how she was feeling about the situation emotionally, which I thought was telling. Uh, one was how she, and I'll just read it. Um, I called and tried to contact and there was no luck. Uh, I talked to a machine and for two weeks, I got no information from anyone. No one contacted me. No one returned my phone call. And then two weeks later, um, I'm paraphrasing now, two weeks later, she got a phone call offering her the free credit monitoring service. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks. I mean, uh, it's just, you know, and then, and then she went on near the end of the story to say, you know, this wasn't a hack job. This wasn't something completely different or this was something completely different in my book. He treated my information so nonchalantly and they're still acting like, yeah, it happens. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And this, I mean, is, this is a news story and she is being interviewed. So you've got the written news and the live interview video for those mm-hmm. who only watch the video parts that say the same things. Yeah, and it's, I mean, I don't see how you can possibly tell anybody you care about your patients mm-hmm. when that's how you handle, what was it, 40 records? Yeah, it was like 40. I mean, yeah. yeah, so we're not talking about hundreds or thousands, 40. You have 40 yeah. people. You had one job. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah one job. <laughs> but it, that is yet another clear indication that, you know, having those paper charts just laying in the car, just stolen mm-hmm. out of the car. That nonchalant attitude, again, clearly no leadership, and it could be one of those cases where you've got one doctor that refuses to go along with anything, and now the others in the group have to suffer the consequences. Mm-hmm. So Are we going to stay with matters. paper? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're on paper. We don't get hacked. No. At uh, least we didn't worse. get the laptop stolen. We just got the briefcase stolen. <laughs> Yeah, well, or even worse, you know, uh, we've got stories where this surgeon, and you know, they get exhausted. They've been in surgery all night, and then they have another one the next morning, you know, and they get called in, and the surgeon was tired and laid the stack of paper charts on the roof of the car and then drove away, going to work. Mm-hmm. And they flittered down the <laughs> <laughs> Flittered. <laughs> flittered. <laughs> Thankfully, a neighbor... Uh, was aware uh, that it was uh, medical charts and went around behind him grabbing them all (laughs) and yelling at him. So that was the only reason that, uh, you know, that one wasn't a big problem because paper, it it doesn't get hacked. It gets thrown away. Mm -hmm. So show him imagine? Yeah. You imagine a fallout, though, just in this one 40 patient practice, or not practice, but the 40 patients that got their stuff stolen. I mean, I have no idea what, the damage to this business is going to be just because they handle it so badly. Yeah. They, you know, that they, they they really just didn't care what's happened. And again, <laughs> OCR watches the news. Speaking of handling things badly, Equifax. <laughs> well, I do have one other thing that I usually show the executives that gets their attention before we go on to Equifax. And I've been surprised at I now know to just allow a pause and say nothing. Mm -hmm. Once you put this slide up on the screen, tell them what it is and let them absorb it. Mm -hmm. And the Dark Overlord, who is still active, by the way, and things are getting really scary where the Dark Overlord is concerned, but that's another story. But this was the first one from last year where we had actually a copy of the ad on the dark web. And so to them, you know, they're thinking, you know, it's this black screen with all these things running across it. And no, it looks like an ad on eBay (laughs) or, Mm -hmm. you know, anything uh, like a sales site. And I show them that ad and all the details that it includes and just let them look at it. And you can see the air go out of them (laughs) because, wait a minute, this this looks just like something I could go buy. It's right. not that, you know, complex. And so giving them the information they need to make decisions. And that's the approach I also take. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm giving you the information you need to make your decisions. And that's the approach that makes a difference. 
instead of you've got to do this. So anyway, getting to Equifax, which <laughs> they've got a lot of business decisions to make. Oh my goodness, dude! It just they're, they're uh, gonna have to come out with a movie or something on this. It's just so oh, there crazy. will be. You know, <laughs> it's. Uh, I even saw something that made the the Enron logo also have Equifax down the side. <laughs> But uh, what a mess. And, uh, yeah. you know, their headquarters are here in Atlanta. And there's a, a Clark Howard is a fairly well-known consumer reporter here in Atlanta. And he is just livid. Mm -hmm. And he is not like a little dog chewing on their ankle. He is jumping at important parts. <laughs> 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 Standing out in front of their headquarters recording these rants about it. And how careless they are and all of those kind of things. So everyone knows about this. I was just in a conversation yesterday with a customer. And, and the client says, oh, well, uh, you know, I recommend, well, you know, you, you should really ask that company about their policies and procedures in their HIPAA program if you have it. And they're like, well, we have it. And so they do. And all of them in the room were like, oh, it's, you know, you they do this kind of stuff all the time. I'm sure they're fine. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you know, you have to assume <laughs> that they're okay. And I said, one would assume Equifax is, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good comeback. <laughs> no, and they're all like, okay, get you. <laughs> because it is absolutely clear. And you don't, you, you don't even have to know the details to see how bad it is. Mm -hmm. But some of the things, I mean, it, it is so clear there was lack of security within the organization. And, you know, that's directly related to leadership, always. Mm -hmm. There's no way that you can claim that leadership, especially in the Equifax case, as, as we learn more about it, there's absolutely no way that you can claim that they made it a priority in their business decisions. And if you don't make these things a priority, it will eventually come out. Because mm -hmm. of the way the world is today. If they would have made security as important as their stock sell-off, it would have got done a long time ago. Indeed. <laughs> so, <laughs> so some of the things that we do know is, and that were absolutely, uh, when I saw it, I, I just, I had to stare at it for a minute and say, you have got to be kidding me. And those that have worked with me for years and years, they know that I have a major issue <laughs> with people who like to put usernames and passwords to all of their insurance companies because everybody gets just one for the office, and they put it in a document or a spreadsheet that everybody has access to. I don't care for that at all. I don't know why it bothers me. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Every time I see one, you know, I break out in a rash or hives, and we have to have some issues. <laughs> And they did not do that. They did a better job. They created a dashboard that was readily available to anybody on their little internal website that had all of the databases listed with their encryption keys. <laughs> so you could get to them. So then when the hackers found that, they're like, not only are you giving me the names of all your databases to make it easier for me to get them, but also you're giving me the encryption keys. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's nice of them. Yeah. So, you know, it's like everybody tells, oh, well, we're encrypted. Okay, what's your encryption key management program? Wait, yeah. what? What? <laughs> what? Say again? In IT handling that? <laughs> yeah, IT, what are y'all doing? Well, uh, we got we this. And <laughs> Don't worry about it. We got this. Ain't none to it. <laughs> we do this all the time. <laughs> yeah, we do this all the time. Just like the Equifax folks do. So, you, you know, there's somebody, security was not as important as things being convenient. And we all know security is not convenient. So <laughs> when you think something that should be secured is really convenient for you to access and utilize, all the warning signs should go off. Red flags, big things blinking red all around you. If you feel like that's convenient, you should question it. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. Even this morning, I was complaining because my security wasn't convenient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were. <laughs> I was. I was like, just as I'm trying to connect everything, oh, time to log in to every freaking thing again. <laughs> okay, fine. But to take it a step further, to reiterate the lack of leadership, and you and I both know this is a rampant problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
I don't even want to count the number of times that I've had to deal with this conversation. And I don't know that I ever get anywhere with it. <laughs> However, this absolute brutal embarrassment maybe could help. It might, might be able to help us. So in the news, according to Komodo, which is a security service group, they were able to get the usernames and passwords that were also collected uh, and published out there uh, for the leaders of the company. And they found, and this one is, okay, let's just go with this. Clearly, <laughs> leadership is a problem when the chief privacy officer, the chief information officer, the vice president of public relations, the vice president of sales, all use lowercase letters, no special symbols, easily guessable words like spouses' names, city names, and even combinations of initials and birth years. <laughs> That's an exact quote of the findings from the security group Komodo on the execs. So you're looking at the privacy officer and the chief information officer. Wow. The two that should have the best <laughs> passwords. I know. Uh, you know, it's wow. one thing if you've got public relations and sales. I expect them to be a real PETA when it comes to security because to them, their information is not that valuable. But it is very, very valuable. They just don't get it. Mm -hmm. uh, but a privacy officer and an information officer, I'm sorry. They, either they were promoted beyond their capabilities <laughs> <laughs> or they clearly had come from another area of the company. I don't know. Maybe sales and public relations. I got nothing. <laughs> well, they have the it won't happen to me syndrome. Yeah. It's not going to happen to me. You know. Yeah, or, we're too big to fail. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, nobody wants what I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, here yeah. you go. Now you are going to be the perfect example of poor leadership and absolute lack of care. And it's the same as the 43, though. This is nonchalant right here. Yeah. You know? I mean, they should just completely wipe out the whole C suite of Equifax. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, and they're already having early retirement. <laughs> is that what they call it now? <laughs> it's always retirement. Or Grab spending. your golden parachute. Yeah. It's time to jump. I'm retiring, or I need to spend more time with my family. You know, those, <laughs> you know, every now and then that's true. But most of the time, not so much. Yeah. So, and then, as you mentioned before, you've got multiple occasions over the weeks that the company's official Twitter account responded to customer inquiries by directing them to a fake phishing site. <laughs> That's just crazy. Now, thankfully, the, many of the browsers had identified that as a fake site. So now you've got social media people not worried about security. Mm -hmm. You've got technical staff, privacy staff, Leadership, social media, and I mean, clearly, this is a it's a massive breach. And everywhere you look, no one seemed to care about the fact that you have data on the majority of Americans, as well as they've got Canadians and <laughs> I mean people from all over the world in this thing. Just mostly us. And to take it even further, there's a law firm in Atlanta that has filed a class action suit on behalf of 20, 29 million, I can't remember what it said, but small business owners. And, cool. and it's absolutely true. I mean, you and I both know this. We are disproportionately affected by the breach because small business credit is almost always directly linked to the owner's credit worthiness. Mm -hmm. So if ours get screwed up, our business is also affected. And, yeah. and uh, you know, it's, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm going to change my name, start over. Well, <laughs> 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 I am Consuela, and I'm here to serve you. I, I saw an article uh, last week where somebody was appalled that they couldn't get a new social security number. <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, really? yes, they were, like, livid. Like, did you not realize that you cannot get another social security number? How stupid is that? And I'm like, really, dude? You thought you could get another social security number? See, when we talk about un uneducated American public, there you go. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss, apparently, in so many cases. 
I don't know. He's pretty mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he feels comfortable <laughs> in that ignorant spot. <laughs> I guess. Uh, but clearly, I mean, Equifax is screaming what happens when there's failure of leadership. You've got insider trading, which is leading to these early retirement. You got lax security. It, it, I mean, nothing about this shows that they were actually trying and had leaders who cared about the business and the data that they had. Yeah. And and I could be wrong here, but if you've seen it, tell me. I saw something where the people who perpetrated this actually said they did it for the purpose of outing the problems. Well, okay, yeah. I, have, have, have you seen that? Well, or there, just, you know, uh, there's so many people who do this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. They'll say, "Well, I am a hacker because I want to expose all the bad security out there." Right. Okay. Well, as long as none of this stuff ever gets sold. Oh, I'm not saying it won't get sold. Exactly. That's my problem. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying that's kind of the. It's somebody had to have uh, some kind of information that it was that bad, and they just decided, you know what, <laughs> we're gonna put it out there for everybody to see. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but but see, unfortunately, there it is. that but that's my point is if if you were truly there to just expose the security issues, all of this information wouldn't be available for criminals to utilize. So I think that's BS. I'm changing my social I call BS. Oh, God. Change your social <laughs> Get in line, brother. Get in line. <laughs> changing my medical records and my social Hey, you can buy one on the dark net. <laughs> Although you got to be careful because <laughs> there's 142 million other people. <laughs> 143, 142. Yeah, you know what I mean. 142 yeah, million, 999,999 <laughs> other people who are wishing they could do the same. Uh, <laughs> you don't want one of theirs. Uh, yeah. So, just a mess. <laughs> you can see, though, is the examples of the results of poor leadership in this area. And it's having that conversation to say, let me explain to you where we are, and what will happen if anyone finds out. This is the mm -hmm. news you're going to hear, and it's just the truth. And if they were like, well, I told you to do that, that's not enough. You're the leader, and you need to be involved in these decisions, and you need to be taking it seriously instead of saying, look, I can't be part of, you know, my security needs to be more convenient. I don't have to have a strong password. Please bypass me in those rules. I can download any app that I want. I can go to any site that I want. And we both know where that can go. And uh, I need full admin access all the time. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like all of these things scream poor leadership. And if it starts there, you know, everybody's going to do what you do. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. And if you say, I don't think that this is convenient either, but I think it's important and I do it too. It changes right. the tone. It changes the attitude, and I can tell you the difference between a company where I go in and I train them, and the leaders aren't the ones that are there saying, this is important to our business, and it absolutely, we will not exist if we don't do this right. And I have people that do that whenever they're doing training, and they or any kind of staff or company meeting, they make a point of bringing that up. Those companies, you see everybody reacting and everybody is part of the solution, not the problem. Other side, the leaders don't show up. Everybody underneath is just trying to do the right thing. They feel like they can't say things. They can't suggest things because they might lose their job because the leaders hate even dealing or talking about these security things. And, it, you know, and then I'm going to get fired if I tell them this happened because they hate this so much. I mean... You wouldn't believe the things these employees say, even if the leaders, they aren't ranting against security, they're just not involved in pushing it. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like if they just say, do what you got to do, and out the door they go, mm -hmm. you know, then that's the attitude that employees will have, and they won't have that direction. So they need that statement from the executive that says, this is what we believe is the right thing to do. Right. So there you have it.
Yeah, it's going to be interesting watching all this unfold. So you, your leaders need to understand these things, and the only way that you can uh, definitely uh, or have any chance, I can't even say definitely, the only way you have any chance of getting through to them is to talk about here's information you need in order to make your business decisions. After that, it's still your decision. And when you Mm -hmm. walk in the door with that kind of attitude about it, I'm giving you information. You can choose to do whatever you want with it. It's not my problem. My problem Mm -hmm. is making sure you are fully informed in order to make those decisions. All right. Yeah, one thing we found that works really well is like when we see articles or videos online that talk about a specific uh, specialty that had a problem, then like let's just, for example, say it was chiropractic or PT or whatever. We like to send that article to our clients that are chiropractic or PT or whatever because yeah. it, it just completely resonates with them and they're like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not post those things on the bulletin board? You don't have to do anything but take the article, print it out, and post it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and do it secretly where no one sees you doing it. Pop yeah, it up. I usually there. just send a link. I don't even put anything with it. I just send the link. Oh, no. I'm just talking <laughs> about those who have to do it clandestine. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You and it's I funny. send the link. We don't care. Here, read this. Yeah. I don't even say read this. I just send the link. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, the silence is golden in that case. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's definitely one of those things where it often does help to have someone else be the one delivering the message. That someone else could be another leader in your community, another practice, people that if you have a, a, a healthcare organization that takes it seriously, you know about it because you're dealing with them in some case. Use all of those tools. And again, the approach is not what you have to do. The approach is you have a business decision to make. Make sure you are fully informed of what you're up against. And that's it. You've got to just give it to them that way and then go with what their responses are. There's nothing else you can do because, you know, it's the man. Document, <laughs> document, document. Yeah. You better document after what happened to the privacy officer that got held liable. You document like crazy those discussions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you'd be like, can you talk a little closer to my pocket? <laughs> <laughs> Say that a little bit louder. <laughs> <laughs> Lean in. <laughs> yeah, I had a friend that would get one of those pens that would record things, and so you could just hold the pen mm-hmm. and you know point at somebody and say, "But," and you know, like you're waiting to say something. <laughs> it's like <laughs> essentially a microphone right there. There you go. I'm a fan. <laughs> See, there you go. All right, then I think right. uh, we hit our limit for the day. Yep. We did. That's our show for today, folks. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to review us on iTunes, social media. Hey, don't forget we have an app out there. There's an app app. for us. Yeah, download the app. I don't know if the one for iPhone works, but the Android one works. Oh, you're such a goober. (laughs) (laughs) I have more uh, iPhone news, but I won't share it. (laughs) But there's a lot of stuff going on. It works. So, yeah. So, anyway, (laughs) get the app, try it out. You can also catch us on helpmewithhippa.com. Listen to it there. Uh, you also get the show notes. So we we always post our show notes there with links and things like that. So if you want to grab the links and send them to your the man, <laughs> they're there. <laughs> if you got any questions, you can also uh, send those to us, uh, email them, or right on the front page of our website. You can send them from there, and we might feature it on a future podcast. So remember, for Donna and myself, HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims. The show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.